Now we're gonna start with you. How you doing? How, me, I just came off a flight. Yeah. Mm. Literally just now. Um, got the call literally last night. Like, yo, we're gonna do a little impromptu show. We got a special guest that's rocking with us for we the sure day. We sure do. <laughs> and um sure. yeah, man. So I was like, yo, this, this is my guy. And Kev called, we out. This is nah, what we're gonna do. First of all, thank you. No, right, thank you for the last minute, like literally, like literally. last night, yo, you trying to pull up tomorrow. And you know you you showed up. I appreciate love that. Like, that's man. super love. And I appreciate y'all wait being patient with me. I hate being late. No, nah, nah, you all good, man. I appreciate that. Nah, I appreciate you being here. We we figured it out. We did. Nah, facts, facts. I do want to say though, um, for all those that don't know, Rico Love is in the building with mm -hmm. us. This is not an uh, interview, right? Facts. We want to really rock what you have, like regular conversations that the homies would talk about in the studio mm -hmm. yeah. or in like we just we just rock and having conversation we like to show the other part of who we are outside of like our professional lives mm -hmm. right right um so but also to throw i do out there. i do want to finish the wellness check just because that's important let's do right. it so how you doing so how you doing yeah i mean life is lifing but i'm glad i have you guys so that made it a lot oh, easier I like i'll take that team mm -hmm. so i'm, okay, I'm sure. okay i'm a solid b plus and i think that's enough for now I'll take that, bro. What's up? How you feeling? I feel incredible. I've been um, listening to this thing called 40 Rules of Love okay. every single day. And what it says is that there are no enemies, mm. you know, mm. because um, there is nobody but us. We are just one. Like, so I am you, you and me. Mm. Mm. So if I'm, if there's an enemy, then it's the enemy of time myself. So if there's anybody who wishes to harm you, speaks ill of you mm. for 40 days, mm -hmm. speak positive things about them. Okay. And after 40 days, See how you the feel. situation will change because you will have changed. That's mm. what it says. It says the situation will have changed because okay. you will have changed. Not the person will change. Mm. Not this. The situation will have changed because you will have changed. So Have you I practiced that? Like, yeah, I'm on day. It? I started. I'm almost there. I started August the 7th. I mm. immediately saw a difference in okay. my interaction with people who, who you know, had ill will issues with me mm -hmm. i immediately saw a difference in the way they communicated with me do you wish that you actually came across that in your earlier days of like coming up and like experience i guess what they call adversity mm -hmm. with yeah. dealing with people yeah I, I think that um it's more about maturity and growth and understanding that for a lot of times we take on the victim mentality mm. even if we have actually been wrong Mm -hmm. A lot of times we still become this victim, and I, and I never Facts. wanted to be known as a victim. So, so what I thought, because we live in this space where we become extremely self righteous, and I think I was a, a guilty of that. So what I thought was, if somebody is ill towards me and I'm positive towards them verbally, mm -hmm. if somebody's screaming and angry and curses me and I smile and I'm kind to them, I thought that was the blessing. Mm -hmm. But in my mind, I was cursing them. In Fashion. my heart, I was hating them. And that's where it's yeah. really coming from. And, and as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So is he. Yeah, I struggle with that. So what I had to learn was, um, you think you're so cool because you're kind to people outwardly who are surface. evil to you. But what you're doing inside, it makes more of a difference. So what I did was I just started faking it. Mm. Mm. I would say positive things about them, I fake it. But then what happened is you start seeing a positive result. Mm. Mm. So now you don't have to fake it anymore. Because it actually becomes Because a imagine reality. if you start seeing results from, act, imagine if you just show up to the gym every day and you don't work out, you just show them working out. <laughs> Eventually. And then you start losing weight. You'll mm -hmm. be like, all right, well, what if I actually work right, out? Right, right, right. This is crazy. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's what I feel like has happened. And um, I, I've been speaking positive and literally the people I communicate with who normally would have issues. Mm -hmm. It's just been positive interaction. I'm not trying to say That's best real. friends in the world, but yeah, but the energy is definitely energy is different. It's just like positive, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah. and it's like, man, I, that's all you can ask for. Okay, how? Why do people generally have an issue with you? Yeah, I mean, it's a lot of personal things in life. Mm. I wouldn't want to get into as far as personal. Yeah. But in general, we all have people mm -hmm. that we may have to deal with on a regular basis that may be difficult to deal with. Yeah. Now, if a person is a stranger and you don't have to deal with them. You, it's easy to take the easy. Yeah. You don't have to see them, you know what I mean? So from your end, what's something about you that's difficult to deal with? Um, see, sometimes it's not about you being difficult. Sometimes situations cause for difficulty. Mm -hmm. So um, I try my best to only limit my interactions with people that may have an issue with me. So I don't make it, it's not like I can, you know. Because yeah. you can't control what, everything. Yeah, what, yeah. One thing I will say, I saw something on Instagram. It's like one of them like meme pages or whatever. But it said 90% of like our successes in life is showing up. Mm -hmm. It's literally 
most of the time, just by showing up, you're literally 90% there because the other 10%, of course, you got to do the work, mm -hmm. right? But just being there and being consistent, showing up, like you said, eventually. You think 90% of, of, of your success Bro, most people up? don't even show up. Think about as many talented people as we all know, and they don't even do the part that's going to actually take them to get there. So, like, I think talent sometimes hinders people, right? Because there's a lot of talented people, but people don't do the consistency part. Mm -hmm. And that's the part of the showing up. I so think, if you I think, think you about it, the percentage down a little bit more. I think so too. I, from ninety percent. I'm just I'm, <laughs> listen. I'm just looking crazy. at. I'm just looking at though. All right, you say ninety is crazy, but think about this. The people who actually be around something all the time, what they say, you be around nine people, you become the tenth, mm -hmm. right? And that's literally only about showing up. All you guys could be rich, and I'm just with y'all. Eventually. I'm going to actually catch you on to something. Somebody going to put me on to something. That's just by being your friend. That's a fact. That's a fact. I disagree. You I think there are a lot saying? of people that ride coattails professionally and never get anywhere. Yeah, it's no, not just the showing it's up. It's just about um, what capacity in which you exist in that relationship. Mm -hmm. There, It's not normal for you to hang around a bunch of multi, multi-millionaires. And you don't become one. Mm -hmm. And you don't, not saying you become one, but you don't get a little bit further in life mm -hmm. and it, but it depends on the capacity in which you exist true now, if you clean at home then you're going to get money to clean home mm -hmm. you consistently mm -hmm. have job clean home yeah. but if there's a, a an exchange of energy and information if you are already an ambitious person they leave that part out you can't just think being around them is going to get it yeah. being around them and having a hunger and an idea of where you want to mm -hmm. be and having ideas mm -hmm. and also having enough class and um tact to speak when you know in spaces where it's open to speak. Because mm -hmm. yeah. just because you're around, you could really cancel yourself out if you're too, uh, too much of an opportunist. Mm -hmm. But if you're in spaces where other people are thriving for things and you have a gift, it, your gift will make room for you. So That's if, facts. if you go show up to a, a table and there are no seats there, and it's Bill Gates and it's Ken Griffin and it's, and it's you know, uh, Warren Buffett sitting at a table and, and you know, Ajit Jain is there and everybody's there. And then what happens is, you are incredibly, incredibly talented at writing music, and somebody will just walk up and say, yo, Bill, you know that song that you love? He wrote that song. Mm -hmm. And we're like, no way. That's my favorite song. You know what? Pull up a chair. There's no yeah. seats. Yeah. Pull up a chair yeah. for him. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. mm -hmm. Your gift just made room for you at mm -hmm. a table that for, otherwise for you wouldn't have been at. Right. Now, if you show up to that table and all you have to offer is the song you wrote and nothing else, if you can't articulate yourself well, if you can't be a light, if you can't mm -hmm. add value to that mm -hmm. table, then you'll only be the guy who write that, wrote that one mm -hmm. song. But you being at that table can change your circumstance. So I think when people use these memes, I think that part of it is clickbait and repostability, of course, right? Of yeah. course. The details go into in those actual interactions, how are you behaving in those settings? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And for me, I'm in settings right now. I've been hanging around some very, very wealthy people as mm -hmm. of late, right? Very successful people as of late. And and when I mean successful, I mean like in the billions. Okay. Right? And instantly in a month's time of being having real relationships with these people my life has changed for the better mm -hmm. um and i th i've seen it i'm talking about Im immediately mm -hmm. so uh it's not because i'm just in the room and it's not because i write cool songs yeah it's because when i speak they respect what i have to say in my perspective mm -hmm. and then i have something to offer them that has nothing to do with their business if you have the if you can offer somebody advice if you can offer somebody a, a listening ear if you have guidance on how you handle yourself as a person as a man as a father as a teacher as a builder mm -hmm. then they're going to be like oh, man i like rico mm -hmm. and then if, if if there's an obstacle it's like a woman if there's an obstacle in, if i enjoy spending time with her and there's an obstacle in between us spending time. I want to remove that obstacle. Mm -hmm. yeah. right. And I think that people associate, uh, or like a relationship, it'll be like, well, if you date me, you got to pay my bills or you got to do this, right? Mm -hmm. No. If I spend time with you and I super enjoy spending time with you and I cannot, I can't not, not be around you and you say, well, I can't because I got to pay this thing off. Mama, we're going to pay that. Mm -hmm. Not because you're pretty, not because you're cute, because you're so, va your yeah, time is with me i love Facts, it so much value. but if that's in the way of this then let's mm -hmm. move that i want to remove that yeah. that's the same thing with wealth that's value i love being around rico rico can you come here nah bro i gotta do this this and then the third because i got this going on blah blah yeah. blah not oh i can't afford it no bro listen what do we gotta do let's yeah. let's figure matter it out matter of fact my guy over here does that he could pay you to do it you do it with us and then you and come you mm -hmm. yeah. we love being around you we want to yeah. hang around you right and I think that that is the value. That's adding value to a situation. Mm. People find you um, Facts. valuable, then they in value. You want it, right? If something yeah. has value, you want it. Facts. 
You're going to do whatever it takes to get that thing around you. And then if that means that you got to grow this person in this space, then mm -hmm. you'll do it. So, Stacy, that's kind of like how this whole situation happened, right? I just want to make this real fast, go backtrack. Mm -hmm. um, Good beard, by the way, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you. I, I, you know, I've been looking like, I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to Yo, keep it up look, a little bit. Really <laughs> trying to keep it up a little bit. So look, I, I met Rico years ago with Murder. Yeah, I yeah, work yeah. with Mace. Yeah. Uh -huh. And he, my guy Sleep. Yeah, they all together. Shout out sleep. Yeah, I saw him last I night. I saw too. that Rico was gonna be in Brooklyn one time. Going, he was gonna do like a little speaking engagement. Right. And I know Kev used to always speak about Rico and his music, writing and all that. Kev is yeah. a writer and all that as well. Literally, I said, "Yo, I rock with Rico. I know him for a long time through Mace. Yo, pull up." I said, "Nigga, if you want to meet Rico, I said, if you want to meet him, the time is right now. now. I don't even know if you remember this. Yeah, remember. I said, right you want to meet him? Time is now. Studio, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. correct. Yeah, yeah. Correct. So." I told Kev, Kev came literally, and this is what I mean by just showing up. He literally showed up. I didn't know that we was going to have to have the conversation we had. Rico came and said, Rico, yo, we got the studio back. Come check us out. And just from that, just like you said, he brought value, and they started speaking about whatever else they started speaking about. And look, to this day, yeah. they still kicking it, rocking it, yeah. music. And now, look, he here rocking with us on the podcast. Yeah, but that's, so, that's showing up, absolutely. But that's also the, what you just said, and what Rico just said. It's the value, because you can show up anywhere. If you're mm -hmm. invaluable, then it And I matter. think it's important that we share that. I know what you, we all know what he was saying. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I think that it's important to share that other part, because so many people you know, repost things and think that it, that's all it takes. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And a lot of times there's a level of... I was talking to somebody today and this guy, he wants to do music and he's, he's super talented. So I was telling him what he needs to do, right? I was giving him a, a step by step. But then I was telling him, all right, I'm saying it quickly and fast, like mm -hmm. it's, it's easy, but to get to step one might take you a while, yeah. mm. right? So now when you get to step one, all right, then, it's, then you have to do the work to get to step mm -hmm. two. two. Mm -hmm. And that might take a while. Yep. And Facts. then you might be stuck on step two for a minute. For a minute. And then you might get discouraged because you feel like, well, this is not happening for me in this way. But you got to get, you know, you got to work to get step three. So a lot mm -hmm. of times people give these, uh, give advice and they forget to leave out so many details mm -hmm. of, you know, the other criteria you have to, you know. The, like, tell, yeah. tell them what you said last night about how writer's block is not real because yeah. that's where it's, where it's taking yeah. me right yeah. now. Writer's block does not exist. Yeah. What does that mean? It's a lie. No, there's no such thing as writer's block. You were writing a song, uh, you were in a studio today and you couldn't hear anything to this beat that you okay. really like. Mm -hmm. You love the beat and you couldn't hear anything. So now you're like, oh man, I can't hear anything. I'm going to just mm -hmm. go home. And then so the next day you come and you try to write to the beat again and you can't hear to anything again. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then uh, you show up on the third day and you're like, I haven't written a song in three days. So now you're thinking. Now you're overthinking it. Yeah. When all you had to do was, while you were in that studio, um, put on a movie and start watching mm -hmm. a movie. Mm -hmm. So I have, have a conversation about mm -hmm. something. Go to another track. Mm -hmm. Play another chord progression. And you realize, okay, all I, I needed to be inspired by something different. I needed mm -hmm. to think about, I'm stuck on this beat that is, is not, it, it's not telling me what to say. Music tells you what to say. Yeah. Life gives you the words. Music tells you what to say and mm -hmm. when to say it. If you don't live life and have these experiences, then when you get to the space where music says, I need you to say this, you don't know what to say because you haven't lived that part of you. Mm -hmm. So sometimes living, this is living right now. Facts. If I'm in this room with you, there's going to be something that I tell you. By, by, you know, by design, I, I purposely, by design, always sit in spaces where I can give value, mm -hmm. give, give gems, or I can receive them. Mm -hmm. So in this space right now, we're learning something new that's going to help us 20, 10, 15, whatever. And we're, we're receiving things. That's what life is. And music says, okay, that thing you learned, I need you to, it's going to come to you when mm -hmm. you hear these chords. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's no such thing as God giving you a gift and saying, all right, at 6 o'clock on Tuesday, it's going to turn off, and then it's going to come back on, and three years after that, you haven't yeah. been able to write a song. Since. It doesn't work like that. Yeah. You have to decide, all right, I'm not putting the pressure on myself. Mm -hmm. When I get yeah. in the studio, it's just going to happen. Yeah. And when the time is right, it's going to happen. No worries. Right. That's, that's real. You know, I'm not a writer, but... If you it makes sense, sense to me. It makes sense. Like, yeah, it, hmm. it makes sense because now, literally, everything is based upon inspiration, right? Mm -hmm. Like you, certain things inspire you to do certain things or move certain ways, yeah. and it's done. That that makes sense. So next time I hear a person talk about my writer's block, I'm like yo, bro, <laughs> it's, it's not real. real. <laughs> Rico said that. Rico, Rico said, said it's, it's not, not real. real. No, it's okay to say. It's okay to say. I'm not. I'm just not feeling it today. Today, let's go, let's and go that's there. cool too. Let's take a walk or some. And you'd be surprised. I've been in studios like so when I first got my 
uh, publishing deal. Mm-hmm. I booked out Circle House for maybe two and a half years. So I just I just asked BB like, what what's the, what it cost to book out the studio every day mm. for a year? And I did it every year for like two three years. And I just booked out the whole studio, A B room, and um, I would just go every day. Some days I would show up and I'd be there from. I like to work early, so I would get there like noon, mm-hmm. and at right one o'clock in the morning, I still haven't written anything. But we mm. just sitting there talking shit, having Bobby. fun. Mm-hmm. And at the end of the night, right before I leave, D Town to play some chords, and I'm like, "What's that?" And I and now we got some. You know what I mean? You know how I many times life has been changed by that? You know what I mean? Hit records I've written because of just being like, "Oh shit, I stuck yeah. around." It came on in the twelfth hour, but I didn't put pressure on myself. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know, yeah. even when even in the studio with some of the biggest artists in the world, I never put pressure on myself. Mm-hmm. I just relax myself and I start with just vibing with them and making them feel comfortable. And when yeah. they're comfortable, they make me feel comfortable. If an artist comes in and they like really super comfortable and chill, mm. then I'm there. What they're doing for me is saying, you can chill. Right. I'm cool. Yeah. And then, then I could be myself and just express myself and be creative. So I don't, I don't ever put too much on me to be like, Oh shit, it's, it's Beyonce. I gotta, you know, nah, yeah. bro. She's, she's so nice. You know? So when she came <laughs> in, you like, Oh shit, I'm good. Like, let me just do what I do. Right. And that's it. So, um, it doesn't exist the way people think. And I think people psych themselves out. And I think you can use that for so many different spaces mm. in which creativity flows. And you always have to look at something and decide, if this were easy, everybody would do it. So I mean, I need to pace myself and say, mm. all right, it may not be easy to come up with the next invention. It may not be easy to come up with the next marketing strategy. Mm. It may not be easy to come up with. But everything I see is supposed to, I'm supposed to use it. I always tell people, it's a gift and a curse fucking with me because... I'm gonna ruin your life when it comes to just enjoying things. You'll never be able to enjoy anything ever because I'm gonna teach you how to find the greatness in everything. Mm. So yeah, now when bro. you're watching a film, you're gonna look at, damn, that shot is crazy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the aerial shot cool. when he came down. Oh, look at the color yeah. changes. Oh, wow, the score. You see how the music came right there? Yeah. You'll never ever be able to look at a painting, read a poem, read a book, mm-hmm. go to a film, go to watch a film, watch a TV show without looking at everything around it. I'm analyzing this room right now and thinking of all the things, yeah. you know, so that's the gift, but that's the curse. Is mm-hmm. you're gonna be able when you do that though, it inspires you in a different way. So if you are into marketing, you're gonna look at people walking down the street. You're gonna see, oh shit, what if we design a campaign that looks like this? And mm-hmm. this, what yeah. if this happens? Yeah. Oh, and you got a podcast. You're like, oh, I heard this conversation. What if we speak from this perspective? Mm-hmm. And this, you know, so everything you do, everything you see, everything you live, it should become so so much a part of your DNA to just think. How do I see the greatness in it? How do I utilize the greatness in it? How do I borrow from this greatness? Yeah, that's real. I appreciate that synopsis because I was actually sharing with both of them. Like, I'm very familiar with who you are, but it also took a bit of, you know, Googling and just educating myself to understand more about you. And then this conversation helps. But for someone who has absolutely no idea who the great Rico Love is, excluding your music, excluding all the talent and the award, who are you? You know what? I think more than anything, I'm a teacher. And I think that um, that's mm. my greatest gift. Obviously, you know, I wrote a lot of songs. Um, obviously, you know, I'm, but I think I'm a teacher. I think if you ask me who I am, I, w- I would love to. I always like, I get a thrill from enlightening people. I do this thing called the Rico Love Songcraft Sessions. Mm-hmm. And um, people come from all over the world and they get in the studio with me. And we just write songs together. Mm-hmm. And, and to be totally honest with you, it's not... I don't make a lot of money doing it. So I love people, <laughs> people pay a fee, but it's really, it pays for itself. Like people pay uh, $520 to come sit in the studio with me. It's and like 20 people. So yesterday we had like 27 people, mm-hmm. right? And you know, after flight, hotel, paying for the studio, paying for the engineer and all that stuff, it really is not a huge profit. So yeah, it's not no, like I'm yeah. doing this to make cash. I enjoy, you enjoy watching it. people and developing people and, and having talent. I haven't slept in weeks. Mm-hmm. I've been traveling like crazy and, and, and it's a lot of new business ventures I'm doing cause <laughs> for me to have to, you know, allocate my time in a really outrageous way, right? But I, I enjoy so much to see people learn and see people grow. And uh, one of the young ladies who was in the course last night, she went to my music conference and um, she had her first number one record this year. Mm-hmm. To be able to be know Facts. that, and as soon as she had the record, she calls, she DM'd me. And I never, I don't remember her from the conference, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> and she was like, I came to your conference. I just wanted you know. That was the one in Indi- it was Indiana? Indiana, yeah. She was like, and hey, good, good, we're number one. And I'm mm-hmm. just so excited because I, you know, I learned from you. And, I, and I'm like, and then other two writers on the song all said the same thing. They all came to my camp. Mm-hmm. That's beautiful. So, you know, to me, if you ask me who I am, I would say, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a teacher. Okay, and if I was to ask someone who, considers himself an enemy of Rico Love, how, what would they describe you as? 
Um, Wait, before you go there, can I get flowers real quick? Mm. Because I'm glad you said teacher. This is the most I've been quiet, like, in a mm-hmm. room. Anybody that yes. know me would know. <laughs> yeah. This is the most, like, I just sit down and listen. And I promise you, like, it started off on the music side. When I first, I remember what the first record was I heard from you. I can't, I can't tell you what it was. But when I heard it, I was like, who the fuck is this? Mm-hmm. Then when I heard, oh, he wrote this for this person, I was like, okay, now I don't understand. So I'm really trying to figure out who this guy is. And then when I watch like an interview, I'm like, all right, now I'm listening. I don't listen to people that, long, that much. Mm-hmm. I really don't. Because I don't feel like a lot of people know what the fuck they're talking about. Mm-hmm. And I think there's a lot of times that I sat and listened to you. I probably watched every interview. Every interview that, had a, that, that, that you were on, I probably yeah. watched it, right? So when you say teacher, I'm like, yo, even on my own platform, I'm sitting here and I'm like, this is the most quiet <laughs> yeah. I've ever been. Because, yo, bro, as much as you are like Grammy Award winning and all these accolades on that side of everything, bro, you really are a teacher. Yeah, I, I think that would be how. Like I, for real, like that's that's thing, crazy I, I that you I said that. Out of I everything enjoy, you said, teacher. Enjoy the most, and I enjoy nah, writing records. Yeah, and I, I definitely. Um, I think I'm learning from a great person. You a mentor. Yeah, thank and you I'm glad so I get much, to man. say that to your face. You thank know what I'm saying? So, so I appreciate you being. Yeah, that's, that's real. That's real. Yeah, my bad. I just had to get that. No, so I got a question for everybody here. Oh, sorry. My bad. Answer your question first. Why would people not like me? No. If I ask someone who considers themselves an enemy of you to describe you, excluding your music. What would they say? Who oh, man. Um, that would be difficult because it's all about perspective. A person may feel some way about something. You know, an artist that I've uh, signed. I'll, I'll put it from that perspective. I've mm-hmm. signed many artists who, who um, and maybe two or three uh, would speak ill about the experience. Not because <laughs> I did anything wrong to them, but because sometimes when you when you hold people accountable, hold your people to the standard you hold yourself to, mm-hmm. that could be a bit uncomfortable for them. Yeah. So, um, you know, I think that it's so easy, though, because as soon as a person s- decides that they don't want to do business with me anymore, then they're relinquished from that. They don't, I've never had anybody held up. I never said to somebody, you have to be here mm-hmm. or you can never go and do anything else mm-hmm. unless, well, you know, because I know situations where people are like held on contracts forever. Mm-hmm. I, Facts. Every person who ever said they don't want to do business with me anymore is immediately free. Mm-hmm. Free of charge, no fees, no. You got to pay two hundred fifty thousand before you get another deal or nothing, you know. So I think sometimes it's all uh, it's all um, it's all uh, based on the perspective of the person. I don't think that um, I, I go out of my way to be a good person, but I do know that I'm um, I'm extremely passionate about a, about what I do. Um, I would never in my life ever try to hurt a person intentionally. Um, I've had I have hurt people, hurt their feelings, or, or, or made decisions that may have hurt others. But I, w- my intention is never to hurt any person. Mm. But I do know that we do that. So I don't think that it, I couldn't pinpoint one thing that I consistently do that I would say people. Well, I can see people don't like me because of this, because you know people have heard a lot of things about me. But I think when people meet me, they always like everybody who meets me who's heard the bad things. Every person always tells me, "Yo, bro, I heard that. That's crazy that mm. they say this, this, and that." Um, I think. Yeah, but you understand people are always going to be just a little bit extra nice to you because of who you are. Yeah, or, or not nice. And that's the mm-hmm. thing that you guys misperceive. Mm-hmm. See, some people go out of their way to be not nice to me because of who I am. So th- you ever meet people that's like, I don't care who that is? Yeah. Mm. So that type of energy is so negative. I was in Vegas one day. I'm checking in my hotel. I'm at the Encore. And there's an executive area Encore where it's like the special area where you go to go to the uh, to the suites, what they call it, whatever. So it's a back area. And this girl comes up and she says, Oh my God, Rico Love, I love you so much. Mm-hmm. And our homegirl was like, you know, I already sensed the attitude <laughs> and the energy from the yeah. homegirl, just, yeah. just <laughs> wanting to be negative. And um, the homegirl, the girl says, who is that? And then she came up to me while I first talked and says, am I supposed to know you? Mm-hmm. And I just politely said, no, I don't think, I don't think you're yeah. supposed to know What are you supposed to do with that? I said, point? what I do is not even in front of the camera, so I think she's just a fan of what I do. Right. So. And then she just kept saying, well, who do you, what do you do? I'm like, I'm really not about to get into all that. Yeah. So, if you ask, people are not normally always nice to you. Some t- sometimes people go out of their way to not be nice to prove some point or that. You know how people are. They just try to act yeah. like, I ain't about to give it up just because everybody giving it up. And that energy is so negative and exhausting, Do too. Do you feel so like that typically happens with women or with men? When women would meet you, are they like, I don't w- care about Women do it in different ways, and men do it also. Because uh, somebody might just kind of be like, what's some, what up, bro? Like, type energy mm. yeah. Yeah. just to be. I think we all do women and men behave similarly um, as far as from the emotional standpoint they just uh, uh, 
show it in different ways. So have think. you ever dated someone that maybe started out as more of a fan and then it became? Yeah, I don't. I wouldn't. I've would never dated somebody that was like came to me as a fan. Mm -hmm. If they came mm -hmm. and introduced themselves to me as a super fan of mm -hmm. me. Well, not a super fan. Just like I really enjoy your work. I really. Yeah, that's I'm different. But a fan. You say if you say fan, a super fan, because there are people who are really fans. fans. Yeah, yeah, fans. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I wouldn't. I would never even make a pass at a person who was a fan, fan, fan. I would make a, like people who were just like, man, I love what you do. I saw right. this thing you did. That's cool. And we get to chat it up. We might mm -hmm. go out. Yeah, but as somebody who was like super fan, mm -hmm. I would not because only because you just feel like you want to keep that. You want to keep that yeah, in that yeah, space. Yeah. And, you know, but I think that some people in all situations, not even just dating, some people will behave as if they don't want nothing from you and you really know they do. It's the long mm -hmm. game. But you can always long see. Long game. <laughs> not facts. If, yo, so... <laughs> It's crazy you said that, right? Um, I've had the pleasure of uh, being with Mace for years, right? Rocking with Mace and doing everything with Mace. And shout out to my guy, D-King. D-King brought us around and really, like, introduced us to everything. Now, I know from the beginning, for me, I, Mace told me something that literally stick with me to this day. If, if y'all don't know Mace, Mace actually will put you on the game. You just got to literally listen. Mace mm -hmm. is one of them yeah. who, who he, he know a lot. Yeah. But he told me something, and I don't even know if he was there, Kev, but he said something that really like kind of helped me shape who I became today. Beforehand, I used to be in love with like the lifestyle mm -hmm. of entertainment, right? And I don't, of course, you know, you hear about the money, you hear about different things that come with it. But like for me, I literally in the beginning got caught up in the parties, um, so, of course, you know, you with Mace, a lot of different, you know, people want to be around, especially back in those days, he was, you know, coming back into the game. So it was like, it was a lot, bro. Bad Boy Reunion Tour. Mm -hmm. And it was just a lot of that, like, spotlight. And, of course, I'm not the guy. But when you with the guy, literally everything around it become, like, a big, you know, thing. Yeah. Was there ever a time... I know I could say I definitely was caught up and I have to learn like I right, know it's more about the money or it's more about, you know, whatever situation, whatever the main reason why you originally want to be in this. Mm -hmm. um, it's more about that. Mm -hmm. Now, lifestyle. Kev, you too. Stacey, you too. Has there ever been a time where y'all got like caught up in the lifestyle of things outside of just like your career? Like just yeah, never, wrapped up I in. I never got caught up in it. I enjoyed partying and hanging out. A great deal, but it was n it was always after I left the studio. Mm. It was mm. always second to what I was doing. I've never missed a session because I wanted to hang out with some girls. I've never been late to any. Even today, I was 12 minutes late. It killed me, and I was <laughs> sitting in traffic, and I was already. I, I texted him at three three o seven. Yeah, when I was going to be late because yeah. of the driver saying I was in the car at three o seven coming from Alpine. There's no yeah. reason I should be late. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when I saw the traffic and I saw it, it went from show up, getting there at 348 to getting there at 407, yeah. I immediately... So yeah, yeah I'm, I believe in professionalism. I believe you don't get to a certain space in life. Take that back. You can't say that no more because now artists are late and high, don't do nothing to still be the biggest yeah. <laughs> But I'll say um, you don't maintain a certain space and you don't, if you're mm -hmm. able to bounce back and recover from certain things if you mm -hmm. don't have a certain um, level of professionalism. But yeah. you're not. I don't feel like I ever got caught up in. I do believe that um, I think that early on in my life and in my career, I was really, really into to women in a way that was like unhealthy for any person. Mm. You know, um, I think that lust and all well, of that how, stuff. How plays can it. being into women be unhealthy? You no, know, being. I, mean, I said when you when you give it so much of your time, mm. when you when you are, and when I say give it my time, I'm not saying giving my time in a, in a sense of more than the work. Mm -hmm. But if you're in a relationship and you're dealing with multiple women, even though you're in a relationship, that's not healthy. That's mm. not just not. It's not even about. I, I, I have grown to understand like being a you know a womanizer and, and sleeping with many women and doing all that stuff that's really unhealthy so you were a womanizer yeah I would definitely consider myself at one point, <laughs> at one point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no, that's real Look, that is real that is real, that is real. A joke like nah. so absolutely so what happens is you um, when you go through certain stages in life there are things today that I'm paying for because of something I did from 2012. Fact. Let so, me ask you a question. I so don't even want to cut you off. I don't want to. Is that where, um, I hope my daughter don't hate me like a mother did came from? Is that where that record yeah, came from? Yeah, absolutely. 
Absolutely. Because that record hit, and it's crazy to be the first record on that on yeah. that album. Because when you when you do have a, a daughter, mm-hmm. you uh, you see it differently. Girl dad to girl son, dad. Son as well though, because you look at certain ways that you know you might be treated. You'd be like, damn, I, I want my, I hope my boy is tough enough mm-hmm. to handle when he has to go through things like that. Yeah. But yeah, I think that what what what. Bro, you gotta give. You gotta sacrifice something. You gotta give up. You you have to be disciplined in mm-hmm. certain spaces, because discipline will get you places that you know hard work will, won't even be able to get you. Right. So fact. so I think that um I'm 41 years old, right? Mm-hmm. So if I was running around with you know nine, ten different women right now, I look fucking ridiculous. You know. Yeah. What yeah. I mean? yeah. But yeah. as a young guy, absolutely. As a young guy, yeah, because especially if you've been there, done that. Yeah. As like, a young you guy, you you didn't realize how much that'll, so how much you have to pay for some of those things still today. Later. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like it's not right. even. That's I'm the, not even making it up. There are things that you have to deal with because of things you've done in your past that you ne- you probably won't ever be. You some things you won't be able to undo. Mm-hmm. Some things, even if you feel like, yo, what do I have to do? Yeah, that's life, and you can't tell people how to how to recover from something you've mm. done to them. <laughs> like that, that's real. That's, that much, the yeah, that's the fact. That's, that's why I think sometimes I got into a space at one point where I was like, "Yo, give it a rest." Mm-hmm. But then I had to be patient and say, "Man, you know, some things that you've done in your life that you know you've hurt people in a way that maybe that they can't recover from." You know. Right. So, so at the end of the day, um, as as long as you take accountability for yourself, not for, and you can't take accountability because you think that it's gonna make them be a certain way to you. Mm-hmm. It's gotta be for you, right. you know what I mean? I always tell people, I used to do this when um, people would do me wrong and then they would beg me for forgiveness. I was like, all right, you good, but I still wouldn't deal with them. Mm-hmm. And let me tell you why, because you don't deal with them long enough, they're gonna say, you're gonna say if that apology was real. Because mm. it'll be like, all right, fuck you then, nigga. Anybody trying <laughs> yeah. to, like, yeah, yeah, I knew, I knew, there, yeah, there yeah, you I was go. Waiting, there go, there you go. Yeah, that's yeah. the person Heard I was you. waiting for. Right. So, um, yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot that I can look back on my life and say, yeah, that that part of it. But I never felt like I believed the hype. I never go into situations, especially when there's certain types of people. I never go into situations believing that this person really is. Nah, it's something that they want to gain. And you mm. can look at it. Certain people and see that, um, especially the ones who lead with that. I don't need nothing from you. That's they need it. You they want it and they're going to get the most if they, they, they want it the most. Yeah, they want <laughs> they lead with the most. Them. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, this has been a very wholesome Rico interview, right? And that's cool. But I, not that I'm not interested in that side <laughs> of you. It's just, I, it's been wholesome. They know, they know me. I'm very big on making everybody come. And I'll, I'll explain that. All right. Because I feel like I've seen also seen some of your interviews and they're always, they're very well spoken. They're very articulate. They're very well done. But I think for the female that may be watching this, I want people to really understand you everyday shit the regular shit like this it's all very kumbaya so far but let's let's move on to other things hmm. i mean even your song they don't know mm-hmm. right have you ever been in a situation or room where you're in maybe your little your little side piece your little boot thing is there but just nobody else knows except the two of you and that's this this is for the two of you as well well go ahead, uh, yeah, we you can first. save rico for last yeah because obviously um, he's been there yeah, yeah. He, <laughs> I, but, but here's the crazy <laughs> thing like for me the young me used to think that shit was cool. Like mm-hmm. I used to, I literally used to thrive off having like two or three different girls in the spot at the same time. And they like nobody else know. Maybe the homies might know. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like that used to be fun to me. Mm-hmm. Like cause in my mind it was like it, like what's the worst that could happen? Well, all y'all gonna say, oh I'm not fucking with him no more. That that's how I used to think. Like, can't nothing happen. Yeah. So I used to dead like see like I right, which one I'm gonna be able to go home with at the end of that night. That's mm-hmm. how I used to it used to be fun for me. Now, me at my age, I can't see myself doing that now. I just played it safe. I just didn't want shit to go left. So, so you've um, never been. You've never been. No, in I've, that been in a, I've been in. I've been in that situation. I think every I man. Just, has I just played been it in safe. That. So you know, I'm just giving everybody a calm three, four <laughs> yeah. seconds. Mm-hmm. How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? And, you know, I just keep it moving because I just don't want this shit to go left. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? I have. I, I need all three left. of y'all. I need. I need it. You don't everything. care if it go left. Don't I'm, care at all. Hmm. What are you gonna do? That's how I used to feel. I'm still fucking you or not. All right. Either way, I'm okay. Yeah, man, shit can get real fatal. Yeah, it could. That's what I'm saying. Like, I don't want you to go yeah, left. Yeah, I don't really, I don't really. Yeah, I've been in that situation before, you know. And I think that I know you might say like wholesome. I'm very careful with what I celebrate. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So um, I got a 14 year old son. Mm. I have a nine year old daughter. Um, there was a situation that happened with me, and um, Joe Budden got on his podcast and chimed in mm. on some real, real like you know. Joe got my number. You know mm. what I mean? And um, he got on his podcast and chimed in on the situation without knowing the details. 
of, of I hate or, that. or knowing my 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 angle on it. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm saying this. I'm gonna make a point with this. So um, what upset me about it was when my then eight year old daughter who gets on the internet internet mm-hmm. and searches my name every day mm-hmm. when she saw it and pulled it up and sent it to me. It broke my heart, not because you can't control what people feel or think or say, but if I can control it, you know what I mean? I'm mm-hmm. careful with what I celebrate. So if I, yeah, I've been in that situation, but I don't want to get on here and just brag about it. Because mm-hmm. there's some things, I, there's some stories I could really tell. Right. And, 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 and every day, but I'm really mindful of what I celebrate online because I don't want my 14 year old son looking at it and like, yo, that's what it is. Or one my, my daughter, nine years old, looking and pulling it that's up real. and being like, mm-hmm. yeah. So, yeah, I made some mistakes. I always want them to know that when I speak about those things, I'm speaking about it from the perspective of where I am today. Right, right. And um, if they see an old interview of me bragging about some stuff, they got to realize that's where he was then. Mm-hmm. And I can walk them through that. So, yeah, I've been in that situation, but to sit here and act like, that was the shit, man. That was that was you know that was some st- things that, and I'm not gonna even say all those things are bad, or I'm not sell it, or I think I'm I'm not proud of some things that I've done. Some things I'm proud of, some things I'm not proud mm-hmm. of. Some things, but as a single man, I really can do what I want to do. Right. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. as a single man today at 41, I could do I could do what I want to do. Yeah. Yeah. And um, you can always do what you want to do. You just got to be prepared for whatever What's gonna come, come with that. Yeah. But um, yeah, I've been in those situations. I don't think it was my finest hour. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? <laughs> I've, I've been in some wild But see, that's that's why I said the young yeah. me used to think that shit was cool. Yeah. Like, but the me now, in I a, used, in a relationship, like, in a relationship, I don't think deception is fair. Mm. So, but um, how is that being deceptive? If you both know what time it is? No, no, no. I'm talking about in a relationship. Okay. If I'm in a relationship yeah. and another per- and a person in a relationship with me don't know what's going on, then that's mm-hmm. deception. Oh, so you're you're big on transparency. Yeah. If okay. I if I if I can be honest with a person about anything I'm doing and we cool with that, or if any person, if that's the decision they make, then that's mm-hmm. fair. I think that if you make a decision for that person, then that's not fair. Okay. So relationship wise, how much transparency do you think is too much? Um, it depends on the relationship. So I, I would say this: um, you set you set the uh, standard in the mm-hmm. beginning. Like some some people are like, I don't want to do what you want to do. I don't want to know, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So now I think you try your best to be on point. But if the person is saying that, then you kind of it gives you room to be able to move a certain way. Mm-hmm. Some persons say if you if you give if you make this decision, I just want to be the first to know. Yeah. I want to be no. I want to know. Those are two first. very different things. Yeah. Two very, 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 very different, different things. things. Yeah. Some girls like I don't want to know. As long as you don't be messy, don't be in my face yeah. with it. Blah, blah, blah. But then some people are like, listen, cool. I don't want you to do it. But if you do do it, tell me. Tell me. Yeah. I, I'm gonna tell you one of my OGs. Oh man, it was so gangster. Uh, his his then person at the time, wife mm. or whatever at the time. It was a girl who was who was trying to extort him. Mm. He was dealing with her, and then um, she said. Do something for me. Or book me a flight and send them. Send me home. I'll, he wasn't. The girl wasn't in town with him. Mm-hmm. She just hit him up like, "Give me some money to go home. I'm stuck." In my, he's like, "Yo, fuck out of here." Mm-hmm. So he was like, "She like, right. I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you, shorty. I'm gonna mm-hmm. Tell you this girl." So she called his girl up. Yeah, I've been dealing with him, and this is this and that. And she said, "All right, well, what's the problem, sweetheart? What? Why did? What made you call?" <laughs> Real. And the, and the wife said, right, I'll, "I'll get you a ticket home, boo boo. You all right." That's cold. And the wife mm-hmm. That's cold. Home. I love that. And, and That's gangster. But then she said after that, listen, man, you you such and such, man. I know this shit about to happen. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but let me know first, cause I'm I can't have Shorty thinking she yeah, got the drop got on one me. up on yeah. me. I had to act like I know the whole. What's play. going on? Yeah. Because yeah. he was like, "Bitch, say what you want to say. Tell her everything you want to, right?" <laughs> but but and the, she did. And, and he didn't think it was gonna go that far. But when it did, he's she. Shorty handled it like yeah. I'm not about to make you look crazy. Yeah, we, yeah. we not about to be, and I think yeah. it's ridiculous when I see the wife and the other girl fighting. Yeah, yeah. I would prefer or powwowing, even yeah. if they knife fighting. What he do, girl? Tell me what he did. Yeah, yeah. I think the fly thing to do is be like, sweetheart, I don't get into all that. Yeah, but I'm he been sleeping with me. That's cool, baby. That's cool. But that, that's go ahead, do your thing. <laughs> now go home and really get with him about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. But to be outside and to be yeah, on back and extra, forth on Instagram yeah, 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 yeah. and y'all going back and forth on Instagram. Crazy. I always tell people this. Your children are going to see this one day. Yep. And your kids got to go to school. Mm-hmm. And, and the way that this shit works is that the mom 
would be in a car with a, with a husband or with the homie and saying, oh, you know, she was blah, blah, blah. And now all the kids in school is looking at your mm -hmm. kid mm -hmm. saying, yeah, my, my, my people said you was on Love and Hip Hop and y'all mm -hmm. was fighting. Y'all was wilding. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I seen that when y'all was doing yeah. this. and Oh, y'all was on the internet going back and forth and this, this, and that. Or a kid might do his own research. One thing about my kids, they're going to be able to look back and say, yep. Pop ain't never said no. He never, he never gave that energy to the, yeah. to the shorty online who was saying that. He slept yeah. with her and is it? He never gave it nothing. Yeah. But relationship mm -hmm. trauma is delicious. I mean, that's why we have the love and hip hop. That's why we have those because it's it's addicting and it's delicious. And it's, oh, I, I just want to eat that up. Like, and I do think there is a certain demographic of people now who are more addicted to the drama in the relationships than the actual relationships. Mm -hmm. Have you ever experienced anything like that, what? either personally with a girl or something that you've seen where it's like y'all are just really in it for the drama? Like, this oh is yeah, about yeah. yeah. I've, I've definitely dealt with um, women who. Don't and, and you know what is um sometimes all people know is war. Mm. So if all you know is war, it's so difficult to exist in peaceful times mm. because you feel out of place. Mm. I've heard I've heard a woman who I thought was super fly say like, I kind of like if if I deal with a nigga he don't cheat. It's kind of like what's wrong with you? Mm. And I was mm. like, and I felt bad for her. at first. I was like, yo, that's ignorant. But then I'm like, yo. When you grow up in that space, when your aunt was outside in the streets fighting with her dude uh -huh. and going to the clubs and you was driving with your aunt to the club to help mm -hmm. her slash the girl tires and y'all was fighting with the girl at the mall because of this. You think that's you, what it is. You, like, oh, yeah. and, but then you see their energy and their chemistry together. You're like, damn, they really love each other. Mm -hmm. They go through it and then they end up married and it's like, oh, shit, they, be, they got a You think that shit is fly. You associate love with that. Yeah. yeah. And you, I mean, I'm sorry, but don't you think that there is a certain part of hip hop that kind of enforces that where it's like black relationships oh, are very talk about yeah. Hip hop is different. Like you, yeah, hip hop it promotes a lot of things that's insane. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like yeah. <laughs> but but I think even with that being said, people blame hip hop, but it's the consumer. Mm. The hip hop because they're only doing what only the people do yeah, what they feed it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah and yeah, I, yeah, even yeah. when they blame yeah. the record companies and say these record companies don't promote, no, record companies will promote uh, an ass flute mm. player <laughs> if, if that sells. <laughs> if that sells, that's fact. They, fact. They're not. There's not a group of white guys behind the scenes saying, "Oh, you know what? We want crack to rule the streets, so let's make it yeah. rappers rap about it." No. Oh, y'all rapping about crack? We not even gonna play it on the radio. Remember, we don't even want to <laughs> yeah. play that shit. And then it was like freedom of speech. Okay, well, let them say, say less. It. Now, <laughs> it starts to sell, yeah. and then they go for it. So, so yeah, hip-hop is a whole different thing, but I think that we have to decide what's best for us, and I think that growing up... I'm going to tell you some crazy shit that ruined my whole life. I've said this many times in interviews, but I, 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 don't, I think it's important to share, share. A guy named Moan, when I was growing up, ruined my whole life with one statement. I was 10 years old. I used to sell packs for Moan, and Moan said... I seen Moan, he had a beautiful girlfriend. And this is back in the day when guys used to cheat on their girl at the house, at the mm -hmm. same house. Mm -hmm. Like she go to work, he bring a girl to the <laughs> house. Girl to the crazy. Crib. That was old school cheating yeah. niggas, right? So Moan brought a girl to the house, and I remember him being on the porch kissing a girl. And at 10 years old, I was like, bro, what the, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, because you knew he had white. I'm like, what? Yeah. Yeah. That's not your girl. I'm, yeah. I'm like, and he said to me, a uh, man can have as many women as he can afford. So now mm. I look I look at my man, uh -huh. I look at my big homies who's mentoring me. I usually say their actual names when I'm telling them if we wasn't on camera. But my mentors, they were all good guys. They were mm. church guys. They were in the community. They were doing great things. Um, they were all married. Mm -hmm. They were all faithful. Mm -hmm. They was all broke. Mm. Everybody Damn. I knew who was getting some money would have multiple women. So at 10 years old, I associated yeah. men Getting with money, money mm -hmm. with cheating. And then every guy I knew was cheating never had a girl that left him for it. Mm. So in your mind, you subconsciously associate this money, this esteem, Damn. this popularity with you're exempt from the rules. Now, I didn't understand all the turmoil and the trauma that they didn't have to deal with years and years mm -hmm. later, or when they actually finally did break up with the woman, or she did leave him, or he did go broke. Because by the way, when that money go, when the money the go, forgiveness, we, that's the part they gotta keep yeah, in place. Facts. They gotta tell me that part, right? Mm -hmm. The forgiveness yeah, she's is gonna, she's gonna, it's costly. You can have many women as you want, but guess what? When you run out of paper, then now all of a sudden she can't take it no more. No, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? At all. Yeah. So I think that uh, when it comes to life. There are going to be situations and circumstances that are embedded into our DNA based upon what we, ra we were raised seeing. Mm -hmm. And I think that for me, that's what it was, was like, oh, well, that's 
I can do that because mm. I got paper. And I don't want to be like these guys. I subconsciously associate the good guy with the guy who ain't got no money and is going to mm. get trampled on anyway. Yeah. And then what happens is a lot of guys I know, as soon as they become the good guy, that's when she start dogging them out, right? So you see that and you start associating them with that. Even though it's not the same for everybody, there are some people, there are so many people, especially black people, in beautiful, healthy relationships. Mm -hmm. I think that the social media, even when you talk about, even on social media, people believe that there's a war bef between black, women, black men and black women. No, there's about 60 people in the comment section every day arguing with themselves. The and same so we, 60. <laughs> so we associate, the same 60 people. We associate this crazy war yeah. between black women and black men. And there's yeah. this great war. There's no war between black women and black men. There's social media and a uh -huh. bunch of people talking loud <laughs> and having an issue with something that really ain't got nothing to do with them and chime in on other That's people's real. business. Yeah. And then there's a group of people that love to watch it and mm -hmm. love to see it on television. So they promote That's me. that because I'm in the comments watching, just laughing, dying you know laughing. I mean? So That's at me. the end of the day, I think that we have a warped perception of what's real and we have a twisted perception of what people really feel and think and do. Okay. I, 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 used, hold on, I just want to say this though. I used to always say, and this is something that me and Kev had debated on before, but I used to always say, I feel like it's two things in life, just especially when you deal with men and women, um, that matters most, and that's money and sex, yes. right? Because I think, and I was just saying this to her earlier when we was on the, on the way coming up here, like, my personal feelings is, I could find another you before you find another me, right? And that's me. You are wrong. See, but that's, so explain. Hmm. She will find another you in <laughs> four and a half seconds. <laughs> She will find another me Explain. in four and a half seconds. Yeah. I will find another her in five and a half seconds and all that. I'm going to tell you the, the realest shit I've realized. Okay. All right. Women want love and marriage. Mm -hmm. Some. Men want sex, right? It is very easy for a man to get sex. It is very difficult for a woman to get love and marriage. Mm -hmm. But yeah. that's the reason so, why I'm so looking listen, at it that listen, way. Listen to this. So when you leave the situation and you start realizing that, oh shit, I want love and connection too. Mm -hmm. But all I'm getting is a whole bunch of sex. So I'm thinking that the guy who leaves his wife or divorces his wife and breaks up with him and then she's going through dating, dating and can't find the right guy and he's married two months later, is he, is he the happier in the mm. situation? Sometimes he's settled too. Yeah. So a lot of times people assume it's easy for the man to get married. So don't believe just because he got married that he's, he's happier happy. or he That's found true. a better okay. okay. What happens is he got what was available. He made a decision based upon what's available to him. Mm -hmm. She's trying to make that same decision, but it's not as readily available yeah. for her as it is for him. You know why? Because a marry a woman will marry a man in some cases, and not all women, because I want one by murdering me. Right. <laughs> but a man will marry a woman because a woman will say, I want marriage. Mm -hmm. You you check all the boxes. Yeah. And you want to marry yeah. me too? Let's go. Right? Yeah, right? yeah. But a woman will say, oh my God, I love this guy. He's cool. He uh, he took me to Dubai. We had a great time. And then he don't call me as much now. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of difference because the thing that's easy for her to get is sex, right? It's easier for her to get sex than it Correct. is for a man to get Correct. sex. Correct. But guess what? She wants the thing that he wants. That, uh, that uh, He wants the thing that she wants. She wants the thing that he wants. Yeah. So it's all back and forth. But you have to understand when you look at the c scenarios, <clears throat> just because you move on don't mean you're happy. Just because she can't move on don't mean that you're more happy than her. You can't look at her in a situation and say, well, you ain't got no man. I'm remarried. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you're going through the same shit mm -hmm. you've been going it's through. In a different way. It's just true, but finding but happiness and finding a soulmate is not easy for anybody. No, no finding fact, a marriage, down. Finding marriage for a man is easy. Mm -hmm. But finding somebody you connect with and you genuinely love and want to be with and love spending time with is difficult for everybody evenly, equally across the board. Right. I agree. But you don't think that us as men, right, we have a more notion of wanting to be able to be successful. I'm only talking monetarily, right? Like money, right? The more money we make or just being able to make a good, consistent way of living, we're more um, open to getting the type of women that we want versus the woman if she's looking fuck. for. I, I'm about to say, no, 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 I, no. no. I actually no. agree with B.I. I'm not only just saying want to fuck. I'm talking about like, it's, let's be clear, right? Most women, I can't speak for all, right? But most women that I've come across, 
they like being around just successful men, even if it ain't for money. Women just like being around men who got something going on. Mm -hmm. It feels different to them. Mm -hmm. So just for that matter, they don't always got to be around that you're sleeping with, but just the energy that you provide, they love that energy. So you know when, you, when you're the man, you're the guy, and just... You're not sleeping with all of them, but it's a lot of one I'm pretty sure that just like hanging around Rico Love for who you are and the type of energy you bring. <clears throat> so it's not only just about sex. It's just that energy that provides that you that you come with when you do have a certain type of money or a certain type of status or a certain type of power. That energy is just different. And I think a lot of women are attracted to that. And that's why I disagree with Rico, because I do wholeheartedly think as a black woman who's raised by my daddy, so I have no daddy issues. I think a man should be allowed to have as many women as he can afford. Hmm. Yeah, by I the way, by the way, ladies, I want you to listen. It's very clear. Being raised by your dad does not eliminate uh, having daddy issues. But that mm. doesn't mean, I do not have that, doesn't mean you ha that doesn't mean you have daddy but issues. But he's saying, I, yeah, see yeah, what yeah, I, no, 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 I agree. You see, you see I, what I agree. Happened there? Mm -hmm. I, was, I, I made my disclaimer <laughs> yeah. very clear. But I was saying, for me, by I the way, do not have daddy issues. A lot of people, are, when you associate that to those things, that's not always necessarily yeah. true. And I'm an unconventional woman. I wholeheartedly believe. If you can afford, and I don't even mean like financially afford. Yes, financially afford, of course. But if you can emotionally afford, if you have the time to afford multiple women, as long as I don't feel like I'm missing anything. I mean, you guys know me very well. Obviously, Rick doesn't. I have a girlfriend. So any relationship I go into, it's me and my girlfriend off rip. And if you are in a position where you can take care of both of us and you can spend time with both of us and you can learn both of us, then have a time. And if you come to us and be like, you're good, you're good, and I really like her and I feel like she would get along well, bring her on in there. You know, like... I. It doesn't matter. Like, I don't think men are meant to be monogamous. I don't, wholeheartedly. I don't think that's for y'all. I think women are meant to be more monogamous. I just think I'm a different type of bitch. I think everybody's situation is, is based custom. on them, right? And I think that, um, obviously, uh, it would be great and incredible if you could just deal with multiple women without reading repercussions. Mm -hmm. The reality for me is that there are always repercussions. Yeah, in fact, no, I get it. But even, but even if everybody's okay with it, mm -hmm. there's yeah. still repercussions. Still repercussions, yeah. Because it's it's very expensive, um, yeah. and it's very tasking. To, um, it's, it's, a, it's a crazy task to deal with different emotions, different personalities. Um, it's, it's a lot. It's difficult. So I think that the decision I make for myself and this, a decision another person makes for themselves is different. Mm -hmm. I think the problem is we chime in too much on shit that ain't got nothing to do with us. <laughs> so I look, when I look up and I see people like, well, Kirk, keep cheating on her. She keep going back down. Yeah, yeah. That's their business. Like, but that's their business. Yeah. I don't give a fuck. Let me tell you something. Right now, <laughs> If people start fighting in the middle of this room in front of me, I'm gonna get up and get up out of here. <laughs> That's it. Let me let me tell I'm you why I'm here. saying that. It's because people will say, well, they put it on social media, so they want us to chime in. That's not my business, even if they came on my front porch. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> that's them. Yo, bro, y'all gotta get y'all gotta take yeah. this somewhere else, bro. Yeah, yeah that's that's yo, them. Yo, y'all gotta take this somewhere <laughs> else, right? So I don't care what nobody do in yeah. their own whatever. That's the 50-50 50 50 thing, some guy, well, I believe in 50-50. Gabrielle Union got on the and said, I pay 50 50 of the bills, and people crucified mm -hmm. her for that. Yeah. Why? That's their life. No, because she's fucking up the grading curve. Mm -hmm. mm. <laughs> if everybody gets an F and one guy gets a D, that D becomes an A, mm. that F becomes a B. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. mm -hmm. But if one person in the class gets an A, <laughs> now everybody's mad because my F is really an F. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the standard changes. So now. if Gabrielle <laughs> Union says, I pay you half the damn. bills, uh -huh. now the girl who knows she can't pay half the bill uh -huh. is, is trying sick. to judge her for yeah, that. She's, the she's angry yeah. because yeah. she... So what I say is, if Gabby and Dwayne want to split their bills that's down the middle... Business. That's their business. That's their business. <laughs> Why could you chime up. in and say, oh, girl, you stupid. You, He got all that money. My love. <laughs> that's real. Has nothing to do with you or me that's or real. anybody. Facts. That's their business. And that's her real. reasoning for it was so incredible. She said one time we got into it and he said, yeah, I pay all the bills around here. And she said, you know what? Let's bust it down yeah, in the middle. Because yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm not going nowhere. I'm not going. And I can do it too. Now, and now I can do it too. So you about. know what? Let's bust it down the middle. Yeah. yeah. Now it's right. real. So what you learned today? That was just about to be my question. Oh, come on. Oh, come come on. on. We here. <laughs> yeah, somebody go first. You go first. What, what Because I ain't talk this whole motherfucking yeah. time. <laughs> I've been listening. Yo, yeah, I learned. I learned. What um, you learned today? Father to father. I learned um to watch what I celebrate, whether it's online or not. Just to watch what I think is funny. Watch what I think is entertaining. Just like. Just to watch it. I got a seven-year-old and a four-year-old, so like some of these things are not mindful to me because they not really seeing a lot of this shit. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So, but thinking about a point where they will, I'm learning. I'm, I'm learning. Or I learn to watch what I watch what I celebrate. Mm -hmm. 
That's real. That was um that stuck out for me for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, well I think you guys know me by now, and I whenever I meet people, it's just like, how do you come off to me sexually? I did it with you. Oh God. And no. get, <laughs> it's, it's just the truth. And I right before we started, I told both of them, I was like, Kev is the big finish. He loves the big finish. He loves that the orgasm. Vi likes the foreplay all day. From you, you just give me the long game. Like, it might be an hour, it might be an hour and a half, but, and it's because you said you're a teacher, so you're putting in time for both yourself and the other person, you're going to get mm-hmm. them there. Mm-hmm. You're going to figure out what gets them there. So I think that's that's what I gather from you, is that you're into it for the long game, both sexually and in life. Like, you're willing to both listen and receive from people. Mm-hmm. She articulated that very well. <laughs> I, I that's dope. That. That's <laughs> dope. I mean, what I learned to me is, um, I think it's dope hearing people, uh, POV, I always say that all the time, mm-hmm. point of view, and I think that... Um, if you if you actually sit down and listen, you can actually learn something, mm-hmm. right? Like, so for me personally, sometimes I catch myself over talking, mm-hmm. and I had to learn to like sit back and just. That was me today. I just I just, just listen. listen a lot. I like mm-hmm. that. Yeah. I fuck with that. And I'm gonna be honest. So I've been running my mouth the whole time. So I don't know if I can. <laughs> but I will say this: um, there's a there's a gift that I know that I have, mm-hmm. and, and because when I'm a natural teacher, mm-hmm. I know that. Um, I try my best to not say anything when there's nothing for me to say, mm. and I try my best that when I can insert something, some level of wisdom. Mm. Yeah. I'm older than everybody here, so I want to. Am I older than you? Yeah, me? yeah, you got. Yeah, so me when I'm older by everybody here, I understand that there's some experiences that I've had, mm. and I know how to chime in in a way that's going to captivate the room. And I, my goal is to captivate. You mm. know, so it's not saying in a way that like it's contrived or anything mm. like that. Yeah. But um, I think it's important for me to be able to add things and add value, and also um give advice where needed to hear and listen mm-hmm. when needed. But I think that um, this is an amazing conversation. I watch you guys already, but I think that this is an amazing conversation. And, and um, I would love to come back. And I was about to say, we got to yeah, do another yeah, part. We, we got to do, do another do, part yeah. for sure. I, we definitely appreciate it. And before you go, I do want to just add this. Um, before I actually met you and, like, really connected with you, tapped in with you, um, you know how you listen to music and you always try to figure, like, how this person might be in real life. Mm-hmm. I think mm. you're one of the people that I can honestly say from listening to your music and whatever I thought about you in the music, I actually kind of still feel the same exact way. Mm-hmm. Actually, like, from getting to know you and being around you and, like, kicking it with you, mm-hmm. it kind of, for me anyway, ran uh, consecutive, like, congruent. Like, it literally came together for me, mm-hmm. and it didn't give me, like, a separate mm-hmm. type So you know how of people say image. don't meet your heroes? I, I met my I hero. think VI had the opposite Fuck that. experience, and that's dope. Huh? And Look. I think you had the opposite experience, and that's mm-hmm. dope. No, I, yeah. I think we both did. Yeah, we yeah. I think, I, I, wow. They yeah. always say, don't meet your fucking hero. Yeah. Nah, look, man. I think um, more black men, we should uh, we should definitely be giving each other flowers. And not for a fact, yo, bro. This guy's a mentor. Um, like I said, I met my hero, and I wasn't fucking disappointed. So you know, uh, on that note, on that note, turn the lights on. You yeah, heard? Yeah, yeah. Turn the lights yeah. on. Turn the lights on. Yo.